Welcome back, everybody, to the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. I'm Chris Witt, and with me, as always, is Mr. Adam Schmidt. Adam, how are you today, sir? Fantastic. How about yourself? I'm wonderful because the one and only Bengals insider for the, for the Nosebleed Sp- Sports Podcast is here. Not in person. Well, in person, just over video because we are all out of town, away from each other. Mr. Andre Edwards. Andre, how are you today? I'm fantastic, boys. How about yourselves? I, I'm I'm phenomenal because before we start talking about the Bengals, uh, right after this bye week, we were just off uh, off air, I guess you call it, having okay. a little conversation <laughs> about Hooters, and I was talking about how Adam is a magnet for Hooters waitresses to come over and sit next to him and kind of put their hand on his leg, try to fish out an extra little tip. Adam says he has a story he wants to tell. Let's hear. It. And let me start by saying I don't want to tell it but I thought it might be good for this. So we all have seen, we've all I'm sure been to Hooters and have seen the, the stereotypical, I don't, maybe today he's called like a bro or something like that. The guy that's there that thinks he has a chance with one of those waitresses, right? Absolutely. So I've, I've been to Hooters a million times and we were talking about this before, like you said, and for a while, I was into the wings. I would go there. That's the only place I, I, I eat chicken wings. The only place. I'm not a wing guy, really. But that buttery sauce, like Andre was talking about, whatever they put on that thing, it, it, I was eating a lot of it. We were eating a lot of it, Chris and I. Butter and red hot. And uh, so went there plenty of times. And the one down on the river is awful, to be honest with you. The service is always terrible. <laughs> 100%. You know, there, there are a few lovely ladies and stuff, but, uh, you know, just, I, I went there enough times where the service was bad that I've not been back there in a very long time. But one time I was there with a buddy and I don't know what came over me. I, I scoff at these guys all the time, but there was one time that I wrote on my check, my phone number on the back of it. Get out <laughs> Oh, that's so great. I got to tell you guys, never heard from her. I'm shocked by that. I'm shocked, sir. <laughs> she her was, loss. I don't remember. Did you leave exactly 100% what, tip? I, I'm sure I left a 180% tip. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, yeah. Cause you know, it was only probably 12 bucks or something like that. So I'm sure I left a 20 or something. I don't know, but I don't <sighs> know what I did, but I wrote my phone number and my name on the back. And I, you know, some, one of those, uh, one of those crackheads that cook the chicken wings in the back probably got a hold of it. Maybe. Um, I'm shocked you didn't get like prank calls and whatnot. Like <laughs> and I you can know totally what? see that happening. I would have deserved it. I'm so no. ashamed of doing that. <laughs> I feel like the guys that are, that would be, that are like overbearing out, you know, probably get on their nerves. Oh. They might do that, but I'm sure you were like, the sweetest guy. She just sat next to you, put her hand on your leg, made you really think that she was into you. She, she didn't at all. First of all. And I also was quiet as a mouse the entire time. Like (laughs) we didn't like have a thing. We didn't connect on anything. There was no reason for me to leave my phone number or name, no reason at all. And I, something, I don't know what it was. Maybe it had been a long time since I'd been on a date. I don't, I don't remember, but this was many years ago, but uh, man, that was, I'm still ashamed of myself to this day, but I mean, if she called, I, you know, Hey, we I, might not even be doing this podcast right now. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, you miss know. every shot you don't take. <laughs> I, I would have been an assistant manager at, uh, at Hooters. So yeah, <laughs> I probably would have been on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. That's awesome. So good. All right. <laughs> Speaking of the podcast, Andre is with us uh, at Andre 03. Six. Six. At Andre 06 <laughs> on the tweet box. I should have let you say it. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Either way. Andre, uh, let's, well, I, should we, should we see how, Adam, do you have the stats Ooh, for these our are bad. <laughs> first half? Adam might be team? actually pretty good. These are bad. I, <laughs> I believe it or not, I am winning. <laughs> um, I had a run between week a two and week seven that I had the correct picks every week. Yeah. 
So I have seven, seven of the nine games I've picked correct so far. Chris has got wow. uh, six and Andre's got four. Yeah. But I'm, I'm back loaded with, with L's here. So I don't know. And really I, everybody else kind of is too, actually. So who knows? Do we have a chance to, to hear the golden pipes? I mean, I'm, I'm praying for it every day. <laughs> oh my God, me too. It. Absolutely, me I'm too. I'm like, let this guy lose one year. I just want one year so we can hear him sing on this podcast. Hashtag me too. Man, I was, I was, a, bit, uh, I was a bit overzealous in the first half of the year for sure. <laughs> I, I think we were all still overcome Ooh. with joy from the Super Bowl run. Man. Um, Andre, you're with us tonight. What's the biggest reason why the Bengals – are where they are right now. I mean, they've lost to Pittsburgh. They've got bad losses. They've got some good, they've got good wins. They beat some, you know, they beat Carolina. They beat uh, the Falcons. They did everything they're supposed to do to those guys. But gee, my knees losing to the Browns on Monday night and losing the season opener to Pittsburgh blew my mind. Where, what, what, how do we get, how did we get here? How do we get out? So I think to start the season, you can't have five turnovers from Burrow, right? And even, I mean, technically speaking, you can have five turnovers from Burrow. You just can't have five turnovers from Burrow and lose your long snapper because after all the turnovers and after just the absolute mess that was opening Sunday, they still had a shot twice to win the game. So um, I think it comes down to a few things. One, I think the severity of the appendectomy and the issues with that and the recovery from that. I don't think it affected him necessarily on the field. I think it affected the preparation and the timing and all of those things that you get reps wise in the, the preseason, they already weren't playing games. Now you take away practice reps and weeks and weeks and weeks on end of practice reps. That's a lot of time. Um, Two, I think the same thing happens with, with the offensive line. Like Collins didn't play at all in the preseason. Kappa had surgery and didn't practice for most of the preseason. Um, you had four new starters. You had Volson, who was now the starter, but was battling with Carmen. So he wasn't getting all the reps. So you just had a lot of moving pieces that under normal circumstances wouldn't be a problem if they didn't play, but you got all new four of five new offensive linemen. You got a quarterback while great still needs reps, still needs time, still needs to to come back and be where he needs to be. And I think there was some, probably a little bit of cockiness added into that of we've got this new offensive line. They're going to be great. We're going to be great. Everybody else is back. Let's just go. And if you watch those first couple series, it was like, they were completely shell shocked of, whoa, I thought this line was going to be able to give me three and four and five seconds for me to just stand back here and pick things apart. And that just wasn't the case. Um, so I think you, you, you face two very strong defenses. One thing that, that Burrow really, really still struggles against is a four man rush that can get to him. Right. Like if you get, if you blitz him, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Period. I think he completes something ridiculous, like 88% of his passes when blitz or something. Like, it's just silly. Like, the kid is amazing. Um, but if you can get to him with four and then cover with seven, that's a bit of an issue for him. And you ran into Pittsburgh with TJ Watt and Cam Hayward right off, right off jump. And then you went straight into Dallas and uh, Micah Parsons. So you, you had two defenses that can get after you with four people you had an offensive line that wasn't gelled yet and a quarterback coming off of a, a serious appendectomy who didn't who missed a bunch of reps so you know and for whatever reason Cleveland just seems to have their their number and it, it's not for whatever reason it goes back to what I just said they can get after him with four because you got Miles Garrett and Ogan Joby and you know the, I'm sorry not Ogan Joby you got Miles Garrett you got um what's the guy on the other um can't remember his name. I don't know. Miles Garrett did pretty much all of it all by himself in that game. He yeah. did, but like, so you have Miles Garrett, um, but they can rush you with four, and then they've got good cover guys on the back end, and it's just a tough matchup right now for 
for them and they got to figure that out. So. And they have them coming up in, in four more weeks. Um, so at five and four, like we kind of talked about, not quite what we expected so far. Um, but first two weeks were losses by a total of six points yep. um, with Burrow coming off of that appendectomy and everything, like you said. Um, and then they beat the Jets. They beat the Dolphins. Two good wins there. Um, lost to the Ravens by two. That's three losses by a total of eight points. Um, beat the Saints. Beat the Falcons. Uh, you know, got blown out. You just talked about the Browns uh, game. That was awful. And then blew out the Panthers. So aside from that Browns loss, all of their losses were, I mean, their four, their other three losses by a total of eight points. Yep. Um, you're also, you know, you were missing a few guys, like you mentioned. You got DJ Reader coming back apparently this week, I believe. Is that right? Correct. Um, what is the latest on Jamar Chase? When is he eligible to come back? So, uh, according to reports, he's still on crutches even uh, yesterday and today. Um, that doesn't necessarily reflect the severity of the injury. It's more so trying to be not as non weight bearing on the hip as possible. Um, I believe he he's eligible technically to come back whenever, because they never put him on injured reserve. Right. So if he, if he was on injured reserve, he would have to miss a minimum of four games. And based upon when he got hurt, it would have been five weeks because it would have included the bye week Right. Mm. So, um, you have to miss a minimum of four games, but because they didn't do that, he is technically speaking eligible to come back whenever. Um, from what I'm hearing and things I hear in the locker room, it's probably less likely Tennessee, more likely Kansas City um, is really where the first real target of like, all right, I think he'll, I think he'll be back and ready. Uh, you know, again, all things being equal and, and that he heals the way that they think he should. So obviously they're a better team with Jamar Chase on the field. Yes. Without him though, I, I mean, are they still good enough to beat every team on, on this list for the rest of the way? Are they, does, does that difference, does him not being there make a big enough difference to win or lose one of these games that might be close? So I think the key to, Winning games with Al Jamar is clearly that running game. If if they can run the ball, and I'm not saying like they did versus Carolina because they ran for over 200 yards, and that's just not something that happens on a week in and week out basis, right? But if you can depend on the running game to get you a buck 25 to a buck 50 consistently week in week out, to where teams have to respect that, and now you've got you know a T Higgins, a Tyler Boyd, uh, a, a Trent Taylor, a Trent Ir Irwin. Um, you know, using Hayden Hurst, using mixing out of the backfield, those type of things. I think you can really open up this this offense, and it is predicated though on that running game. I don't think there's enough offensive firepower if the running game is not there. There, if you go back and watch, you know, the 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 Cleveland game, which was the first game without Jamar, like they looked completely out of sync, completely off kilter. Nothing was working. The run game got shut down. The passing game didn't look great. Um, and so it was like, oh, my God, what are we going to do without Jamar? And then they changed up their runs a little bit. So they were doing a lot of zone runs before. And now they're going to a lot more what they, what they call gap schemes um, and pulling offensive linemen to to make blocks and, and doing things like that. And that seems to have opened up some holes. Um, it helps the offensive lineman, it helps the running back. Um, so I think the best thing of the Jamar injury may be trying to figure out this offense without him. And then once he comes back, you're just adding another dimension. All right. What about the most important injury on the team that without this injury, maybe the Bengals have one or two more wins Clark Harris. Is this dude um, coming back this year? Because I really believe that no. Evan McPherson is out of sync in every way, and I blame every bit of it. I'm not saying that the long snap we have now is bad. It's just not the – he's just not – you can see there is no rhythm. 
right now. Yep. Yep. Um, I don't know necessarily that it, that it has cost you more than the Pittsburgh game per se, um, because I don't necessarily recall any kicks that came down at the end that we missed or that he missed that would have decided the game. Yeah. You know, it was, we're building a lead where you're trying to come back, but you're still a couple scores down or whatever. You know what I mean? Like in the, in the Cleveland game, you missed a couple of kicks. The, making those couple of kicks isn't going to matter in that game. Uh, he, he missed a couple of kicks in the Carolina game, making those kicks only just extends a dominating lead anyway. Right. The one game that you absolutely lost because of the long snapper was the Pittsburgh game. But I w- I'm, I'm in full agreement with you. Something's not right. They, like, it's just, and it's just a tick off. It's not like he's shanking them. It's not like he's just way, way off, but it's the, the timing, the rhythm, the trust, the, whatever it is, there's something that is just not quite right. Um, and it's, it's affecting the process. And I think part of the reason why they are even more reluctant to go to Drew Chrisman um, is do you really want to continue to mess with something that was such a big weapon for you, you know, all of last year and especially the playoffs. Yeah. yeah and, and, and clearly how in a, most NFL games go, most of them are one score games. Right. And so it's going to come down to oftentimes making a kick at a crucial time. And now do you, you have a new long snapper, you have a new holder, you have a second year kicker, how reliable is that situation going to be? So I don't know, man. Um, definitely something to, to stay tuned to and, and look forward to. I totally agree with that. But that because I think that Huber would no longer be kicking for this team right now if it wasn't for the fact that Clark Harris has been out and that in that Evan McPherson is is the way he is right now. They've got a good relationship together. You hear him, you know, read the stories of them and all that stuff during the Super Bowl and all that. But they've got their – they've got a good relationship. But right now, we can't flip a field on defense. If we have a ball at the 50-yard line, we're going to kick it to the 30. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, he's got multiple less than 30-yard punts. It's wild, man. Like, he has fallen off a cliff. It, because if you go back, actually, last year, it's by tenths of yardage. But he had one of his better years in his career – last year punting so just from last year to this year the fall off has been tremendous he's been how many how many years has he been in the league 14 i think so he's he set the Bengals franchise record for number of games played um and he set that i think by starting his first game of the season this year so Anything that he does beyond that is just extending his record. So in my personal opinion, especially if Chris Man can do the holding duties adequately, it's, you know, thank you for your service. Really appreciate you, but you got to move on with your life's work and whatever that is. We'll celebrate you next year. We'll see you at the, we'll see, see you yeah. at the ring of honor ceremony. Yeah, in a few years. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Come be the ruler of the jungle next year, you know, four or five years from now, we'll induct you to the ring of honor and you've been great, man. But you know, it's time to move on. So you uh, you went to a few games. Uh, I know you were at the Dallas game. I was. And he's also at the Pittsburgh at the game. Pittsburgh game. And, yeah, no. so a couple big uh, – couple road L's that we had to take. Any good stories, anything? anything? Uh, I mean, obviously we lost. But anytime you're a Cincinnati Bengals fan in Pittsburgh, there's always seems to be some kind of story. So the Pittsburgh game, Pittsburgh game was actually at home. It was a season opener at home. Oh, that was at home, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the Dallas game, my brother and I decided to take my dad, who was a giant Dallas Cowboy fan, down to see Jerry's World and whatnot. Um, the, probably the most interesting thing of that was like the entire time my dad was like, yeah, you guys will probably win. Yeah, you guys will probably win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll probably win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then like we get in the game and like, He's going nuts because Dallas is like winning and kicking tail. And like he wants to be like, oh, how's the game going, guys? And we're all just like, oh, this sucks, dude. <laughs> People's mountain this comeback. And my dad gets like super quiet. Like all the trash talk, 
just completely goes out the window. He won't, he didn't want to talk about it. I'm like, how are we feeling, Dad? And he's just like, I'm talking about it. Like, stop talking to me, whatever. And then the end of the game comes, Dallas kicks a field goal to win. He's, you know, super happy, super excited. You know, um, all the joy comes back to him. But uh, now nah, it was, it was fun, man. That, that place is absolutely nuts. I mean, it's, it's amazing. That screen, like you can't see the other side of the field because the screen is so big. That's um, insane. I mean, I'm not kidding. Like you can't see the fans on the other side. It's, it's nuts how big that you find. I found myself just watching the screen rather than watching the play on the field because it's so gigantic and just like, it's obtrusive. <laughs> yeah. I've heard many people say that, that they end up, especially if you're up high. Yeah. They just watch the whole game from the, it's like sitting and watching a big screen TV. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nuts, man. An 80 was, yard big screen TV. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. That's cool. Yeah. It was a good time though. Plus uh, and the food was really good. Cause you know, you're down in Texas. So you get like that Texas brisket and barbecue, oh, yeah. and whatnot, which was money. Mm. That's awesome. Good, good, good. Good for you. What do you got, Adam? Uh, what do you What do you have in the uh, orb there? In the wine orb? Uh, I don't know. Some sort of Sutter Home something or other that uh, was poured for me. So I was like, all right, sure. Why not? Nice. The old Sutter Home something or other. Not exactly right. One of my favorite grapes, I got to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got straight, a good nose. Straight from, it's straight from France. That's right. It's got a good yeah. nose. <laughs> Just like me and Adam. Yeah. <laughs> oh uh okay <clears throat> so we have pittsburgh tennessee kansas city the browns the bucks the patriots the bills the ravens you don't get to change what you've originally picked but if you could this time one two th- so you so we have what nine more eight. games nine uh eight more games eight right? That schedule, how, seeing the first half, how do you feel now? What would you say for those last eight games? Uh, man, unfortunately, probably something along the lines of four and four feels about right. Um, and again, that's without like having the list right in front of me and going through game by game. But um, you know, I think you, I think you have some pretty winnable games in Pittsburgh. I think you, you, especially if DJ Reader is back to where he should be, uh, come that Tennessee game, like Tannehill and that offense doesn't really scare you to put up a, a ton of points. Um, and if you can get up early on them, they're the type of team that because they are so heavily reliant on the run game, if you can get up on them, you feel pretty good about that. Uh, you feel pretty decent about Deshaun Watson in his second game back. Um you know, in two years, um, being able to one, Lou gets a little bit of tape on him, which is good. But then two, he he just hasn't played a game in two years. So yeah, I'll take my chances with, with that. And then, you know, you find some way to, to grab a team like a, like a new England or who else did you throw out there? I'm trying to think, uh, the the bucks, the bucks. I I don't know if the bucks are, I don't know what the bucks are yet. Yeah. They don't, they don't look uh, that great. They don't look great. Even, even in the winds, they don't look great. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I think there's some opportunities for wins. I, I, I don't necessarily think you're beating Kansas City. Maybe Josh Allen turns the ball over 16 times, you know, whatever. Cool, that's possible. But, like, if all things being equal and they just played that game straight up and both, team was, both teams were at their best, I think Buffalo probably wins that game. Um, so I, I don't know, man, four or four feels about right. And you end up finishing nine and seven and you look back and you kick yourself for losing the game to Pittsburgh that you shouldn't have lost. Yeah. So <clears throat> I know it depends on what everybody else does, but number one, is it too early to start worrying about playoffs? And number two, if they do end up nine, well, be nine and eight or eight or yeah, or whatever 10, it is. Yeah. Sorry. Eight, yeah. 10 and seven or whatever. I guess that would make a difference. Nine and, yeah, nine and eight, I think. 
because they're five and four now, right? Yeah. 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 So at nine and eight, any chance? I don't think so. In? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, just because you look at the the one, you're already on three in your division, and your division record is one of the first tiebreakers up on the list. Um, I don't necessarily see them catching Baltimore because Baltimore has got the easiest strength of schedule for the rest of the year. So that's going to make it super tough to try and catch those dudes. Um, two, um, I think if you look at the other divisions, I mean, you got the entire AFC East is above 500, I think, or at least at 500, somewhere around there. Cause you got with between Buffalo, the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Patriots are all right around 500 or better. Um, you probably got one or two coming from the West, uh, Kansas City and the Chargers are both in it. Um, the South will probably give you one, Tennessee, I'm assuming. Um, and then you got Baltimore and then then you're kind of in that mix of six, seven, eight of mm, maybe you squeak in, but probably not. Cause again, a tiebreaker situation just isn't good from where you are from a division standpoint. Got it. <laughs> Bengals go six and two, walk into the playoffs, no issues, Super Bowl bound once again. I call or, it right now. Or do they tank for a better draft pick and a better and an easier schedule next week, next year? Next year. Go like one and go like one and seven in the last eight. Yeah, I, I, like as funny as that is, like I just don't. I don't think they have the quarterback to do that. Like I don't. I, like he was like, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, I don't care how I don't care how beneficial it would be. Like I'm just not doing that. No, no chance. Hand it to hand it to P Ryan every time and. uh see what happens <laughs> what's the uh what's the what's the old coach who just left the dolphins and said they're they're telling him to their oh uh, yeah to yeah get, a, get, your, get your bonus he's uh he's now any the linebackers coach or something at in pittsburgh now yeah, flores? yeah yep flores yeah he's uh he's uh yeah, joe burrow is not just gonna do something like that it's not gonna happen not gonna happen but, no not how i do rules not how i do rules well, they put everything together and, and you get uh, Jamar Chase back in, you know, maybe th two, three weeks or whatever. Yeah, I'll tell you. So the one thing um, that I think really, really hurts the Bengals and is probably even more significant of a loss than Jamar Chase and DJ Reader is Chittabay mm. yeah. Uh Losing, losing Cheeto hurts. Because Cheeto, one, I think is highly, highly, highly underrated. Um, just, you know, being a second team do where they didn't pick up, you know, where they didn't re-sign him in Dallas and just kind of let him walk and whatever. I don't think he gets the level of respect that he deserves for the type of play that he's had. He's the dude that takes away and completely wipes out the other team's number one wide receiver. And then you can help. Eli Apple, you can help Cam Taylor Brett, you can help whoever else you need to, you know, on the other side, because you have Cheeto, you know, locking down, um, you know, the, the primary receiver on his side. And I think by losing him, it causes a giant ripple effect of now you have to depend on Eli Apple or Cam Taylor Britt to take on the number one wide receiver. Nobody really wants that. Um, and then now you have Eli Apple, Cam Taylor Britt taking on the second best wide receiver. And quite frankly, nobody really wants that because you're already <laughs> giving help to whoever's covering the number one dude and you don't have help for whoever's covering the number two dude. So it, to me, that was a that was a huge loss uh, for this defense. And I'd be really, really interested to see how they handle the top rated offenses that have a lot of weapons without having Cheeto. Got to come up with more tricks when you got yeah. guys out. Yeah. I was just looking at this. <clears throat> From our picks that we made before the season started, last eight games, Andre has three and five. Chris has five and three. And I have four and four. 
All right. Are we going? Are we going overall record? Yes, I think overall record. So the but, overall record, but the tiebreaker is if if it ends in a tie or if something is close, then we go on number of correct games picked, right? Okay. Correct. Yep. All right. Just making sure I understood. Yep. Yep. All yep. Right. And we, we it would have to come down to a tiebreaker if they went well. You and I had them at eleven and six. Chris had them at thirteen and four, and <laughs> which which no, no. seems as silly as my no, no. one and whatever I had them last year. <laughs> It's still doing. It, it is. I mean, hey, it, we can go it eight eight possible. Like Kevin Garnett, baby. We can, it's like it's <laughs> we can do it. Eight, eight, no, baby. I'm ready for it. Get it. Make it happen, son. Make it happen. That'd be great. So I'm singing again, is what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the board. first part of the, the setup of the whole show was like, ooh, there's a chance. Maybe. No, nah, not really. You had to go to 13 <laughs> I, I don't remember doing that. But so. I just had to clarify the rules, man. I just wanted to make sure. Yep. <laughs> clarify, not lose. <laughs> <sighs> All right, I'll start thinking of the song I'm going to sing. But every time the Bengals win, until they lose, I'm texting you guys. Every Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Make it happen. Anything is possible. It's just going to be the Kevin Garnett emoji every single time. <laughs> every is it an emoji or a, it's got or a be. GIF? It's got yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, whatever they're called. Oh Lord, oh man, Andre. Right. What else is there? Anything? What is there? Is there any last bows that we need to tie on this Bengals? Where everybody's a little disappointed in the the way the first half went. Obviously. Um, with a couple of bad losses. I think we covered everything in between them. Yeah. If so, so I ask you guys two questions and I'll give you a half a second to think while I'm formulating the question, but give me your first half MVP and who your second half MVP should be or needs to be. I'm going to go Jamar Chase as the first half MVP. Okay. And then second half MVP, I, it's going to have to be either it's going to have to be uh, either Burrow or uh, what's the safety's name who's already got three interceptions, four interceptions. Oh, Von Bell. Yeah, Von Bell. I, I think Von. What Jesse Bates is going to do? What Jesse Bates does? He's played. He's played. You know, up to his normal standard, I'd say, right, right about there. But I like Von Bell back there. He is just seems to be in the right place at the right time. I'd love to have a deep, be able to say our defense has the MVP of the of the second half. Can All you right. just give it to the defense? I just want to no. give it to the defense. No. Gotta get a person. I need a person. So All right, then I'm going. I'm going to go Burrow then. Second half. Burrow. After all that talk, <laughs> I'm going to agree with you on Jamar Chase being the first half MVP. Maybe a couple other guys that you can talk about, but second half MVP. I'm going to say Joe Mixon. And maybe that means that the offensive line probably has to be the MVP, but can't give it to a whole. Sure. A what about whole... a guy like Hayden Hurst? I mean, he's been pretty big. Sure. That's why I'm just doing it. That's why I just threw it out there as a as a as a question of like, eh, thinking back through the first half of the season and what you saw and what you liked and what you didn't like and all the things that you that that we went through as fans and that they went through as a team, who really stood out to you as like. Man, without that dude, where in the world would this team be? Right? You know, I mean, every game seems to be somebody different. Hmm. You know what I mean? Joe Mixon, five touchdowns one game. Yeah, uh, Jamar Chase had a couple games where it was him and Bur it was the him and Burrow show. I mean, there's I feel like you could do a lot of different people just depending on when it was. Who's yours? So my first half MVP would be Cheetah Bay. To 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 lose reader to uh, have Burrow start off the way that he started, to have the offense start off the way that they started. And for that defense to hold teams to the minuscule amount of points that they were holding them to, I think they were somewhere, like the first six games, they were averaging like 16 or 17 points a game or something ridiculous that they were holding teams to. No yeah. second half touchdowns. No second half touchdowns. Seven games of the season. I mean, like all of these things are – 
incredible, but you don't you don't do those things unless you have somebody who can completely eliminate the other team's best threat. And that's what Cheeto, that's what Cheeto did for this team. Like to your point, yeah, you can name a game where Jamar Chase went off, or you can name a game that T. Higgins had, or you can name a game that Tyler Boy had or that Joe Mixon had. All right, cool. I'm telling you, every single game that Cheeto played, he locked down that other best, you know, wide receiver that that the other team had. Um, so that would be my my first half MVP. My second half MVP, MVP, it better be Joe Burrow. And you know, like for him to about to be paid half a billion dollars, it better be Joe Burrow. Yep. And if that's throwing the ball to Chase and making Chase look great or Higgins look great or, you know, you're getting the ball to mix and do it, fine. That's great. It better be Joe Burrow. Run the offense. Run it and let's go. Because everything that we, if you look at teams that are successful in this league on a consistent basis, it's because they have a, a, a very good to great quarterback. If you, you look at the, you know, the Patriots of the last decade, two decades when they had Tom Brady, you look at the Aaron Rodgers of the world, uh, currently the Mahomes, the Josh Allens, the teams that are that are consistently at the top of their divisions and, and vying for championships are the teams that have great quarterbacks. And if Joe Burrow wants to be considered part of that great quarterback echelon, he needs to have this team in contention for playoffs year in, year out. I'm not saying you got to win a crap ton of Super Bowls. That's tough to do. But you need to be in contention year in and year out. And so in order to do that, Joe Burrow's got to be the man. And he's got to show that. There you go. Agree. I agree. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, Andre, did you uh... – did you come with a list of your top four vehicles that you would like to own? I sort of, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Me too. Sort of. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> so I'm not a giant car guy per se, right? So I, I can't tell you like, hey, give me a 1972 SS Monte Carlo. At, like I, yeah, I can't, I can't do that. I can give you a couple of brands of cars that I would really love to own um, where, you know, money and insurance and gas were zero object. Let's just go, baby. Um, but I actually took it a step further and went real and fictitious. Oh, so right. I'll give you I'll give you my real list first. So my real list is I would like to own a Bugatti. I would like to own a Rolls Royce. I would like to own a Lambo. And I was just going to leave it at Lambo. But during the Super Bowl, did I tell you guys I drove a Lamborghini SUV? No. I don't remember. Yeah, let me, t let me tell you what. So I, I, drove, I, I got to drive a Lamborghini SUV. Was that it might be the sexiest car I've ever been in my entire life. What was it for? It, to drive? What do you mean, was it for? I mean, did you rent a Lamborghini? Like, yes. <laughs> That's wow. the greatest thing I've ever heard. I didn't know you could do that. Wow. I have no idea. <laughs> so a friend of mine, we, we've been calling Ubers the entire time, right? To get to different venues, to go to different places. And he's like, I'm tired of getting Ubers. Let's just rent a car and then we'll always have it. And we can just go wherever we want, whenever we want to go. We're like, okay, fine. So we're, we just got dropped off at some place. We want to hit this shop. So we're shopping at this shop. Cool, great, awesome. He's like, all right, guys, the car's on its way. We walk outside, we're looking, there's no car. And all of a sudden you just hear this like rumble of what sounds like thunder <laughs> coming down the street. And it stops in front of us. It is a matte gray wrap. Oh, like charcoal oh, yes. of a Lamborghini SUV with like these giant tires and just like it was it was the sexiest car 
I have ever physically been close to in my entire life. <laughs> so we're like, what's happening? And he's like, ah, don't worry about it. He goes over, talks to some dude. He hands over the keys. Cool. We all get in. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. This is insane. So at <laughs> some point in time later on in the night, he's like, okay, who wants to drive? And everybody else was like, nah, I'm out. And I was like, give me the keys, bro. <laughs> give me the keys. <laughs> 100%. Give me the keys. Let's ride. Ooh. So yeah, I got to drive a Lamborghini SUV down like Rodeo Drive. In oh, LA. Yeah, it was, it was so dope. It oh, was so God. dope. Uh, That's insane. Oh, it was nuts. It was nuts. And then a uh, Mustang GT um, to round out my top four. Again, I don't have years. I don't have models. I, you give me a car by those makers, I'll figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah, um, I got you. My not real list. Uh, I'm going to go with Kit from Knight Rider. Yes. Oh, yeah. Give me the mystery machine when I'm trying to hang out with my boys. Just kicking it. Mm-hmm. Plenty of room. Give me, give me Herbie, Herbie the Love Bug, just because <laughs> that dude is a funny and like just always cracking antics and jokes and whatever. He keeps it, keeps it uh, spicy. And then I absolutely need a DeLorean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody's got to have a DeLorean. Got to have it. Right? I have been, I've been in a DeLorean. See, my my dad's old boss when he worked at uh, Firestone. The, I don't know. Uncle Jimmy is what we used to call him. I don't know. Uncle Jimmy Brogan <laughs> drove to my house one day and he's got a Lamborghini. I'll never forget. I was a kid. It was like in the early 90s. I jumped in it and I looked in the back and I said, where's the flex capacitor? Where's the flex capacitor? <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> but they had yeah, the doors that open like that. And yeah. Yeah. Let's get this, so let's get this thing up to 88. See what we can Yeah. Do. Exactly. <laughs> 1.21 gigawatts. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, so, if we're talking about those vehicles, where does like the Batmobile fit in there for you? Ooh, that's probably pretty good. Like, I don't know. I already like I got kit, so yeah, all that stuff that I need I would get from the Batmobile. Mm, I could probably replace Herbie's love bug with the Batmobile, but you know. Nice. All right. That was the only other one that popped into my mind when you started talking about those. Um, nice. Those that's, I mean, well done. above and above and beyond with the, with a double list. I love yeah. it. So, yeah, yeah. Just so you, just so you know, Andre, when Adam came up with this uh, Mount Rushmore for us, we both said neither of us are car people. Like uh, <laughs> no, we're not car guys either <laughs> in any way, shape or form. Both so our dads are. Same but we get it. <laughs> yeah. Both of our dads love cars, and it's all they talk about. Here, I got no. I got no. I couldn't hey, tell you the it, difference it's between very those. similar. It's very similar to me and my dad, like and my brother, both very, very like mechanically inclined dudes, right? Mm-hmm. Like my dad ran building maintenance for Hamilton County for thirty years, thirty plus years. Keith is an HVAC specialist out at Kings Island. Like these dudes can walk in, look at something, be like, okay, this is what needs to happen. Figure it out and go. My job is to call them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's my whole job in, in the thing. Like don't even ask me really to be like, hey, can you go pick up the Fliberty gibbet? I don't, I don't know what that is. Is it the square one or the yeah. one? Which, can you which send one? Me do you a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I will buy it. I can do that. But yeah. yeah, I'm out. I'm out. That's hilarious. I love that. I have a buddy who he, he'll call us all over to go to his house and go, we'll all go do something. And he'll just, we got one buddy that'll come there. And his job is to bring the beer. That's his job. And hey. when somebody needs a beer, they go, hey. And he turns around, he grabs a beer, and he walks over and he gives it to him. That's his job. That I can do. That I can do. Yep, hundred percent. Nice, Chris. All right, you go next. Okay, I, I I guess I'll go next. Um, so, not so glad we anything, came up with this list, guys. This is great. great. <laughs> so not not knowing anything about cars or like even really caring about. I had the same car for the first ten years that I could drive. I had the exact same car. Chris drove uh, the last so, Saturn that was on a road. 
<laughs> yes. And I'm going, so I'll start off with, I always wanted like an F-250 big super duty. Like with, the two, with, like with the four tires on the Yeah, the with the, dually, the dualies in the back. Uh, you know, with the diesel, when you pull up to McDonald's, they got to ask you to turn the engine off. Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted a big truck like that. Uh, and so I'll, I'll, call, I'll say that's number one. Number two. Uh, so last week, driving down the road, I saw a charcoal, that same like flat matte charcoal color in a, one of those Mercedes G wagons. That was, I mean, it's, it's a goofy looking little boxy car, but I, I, for some reason, I think that's one of the coolest cars. I would love to have that. Number three. Good, good question. Because I don't need anything fast. I don't want anything fast. I think a Rolls Royce looks cool, but I'm going to go number three. I'm going to go with a Harley. Okay. I think I like to have them. I always wanted to drive. I always wanted a motorcycle. Never All got right. one. So I'll go with a Harley. And then last but not least, the only car that I really, really would love to have, right? Like Saturn. if I could have any car, oh, it would wait, be a no, 1995 sorry. Saturn SL2 <laughs> with the sunroof. I, I loved it and with the purple champagne color. I called it champagne. Some people called it purple. That that I that was the best car I've ever had. It's my favorite car. I had it forever. I want that car back. That's awesome. I want my first car back too. I had a good one too. I had an 85 Buick uh, Skylark. Skylark, yes. It was cool. It was um, a monster. He had like a 37 disc CD changer in the back of it. <laughs> It was a, I think it was a, it was either a six, I think it was a six disc CD changer. I think it was a six. Was. Yeah. I had the, the, uh, <laughs> WWF, uh, theme song CD. Uh, what else? I probably had Dog, the Snoop Dogg's, uh, yeah. first album. Uh, Doggy first style. Doggy had, style. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Uh, yeah. What's, uh, Dr. Dre's one from chronic or chronic. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I don't know what else you had in there, but I do remember having to stop the car, open up the trunk, and change CDs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, we had to switch from Snoop Dogg to Nirvana once in a while. and That's right. Can't have them in there at the same time. No. No. <laughs> no chance. All right. So, I like a, a specific look in a car, I think. So, the cars that I like the best, number one, luxury, 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 luxury. I, I'm not a sports car guy. So number one, like late 80s to early 90s Cadillac. I think it's called a Brom or something like that. Um, I don't know if this is going to work. Nope, it's not going to work. It's the background. It's, I, was, I was trying to show you a picture of it. But anyway, a Cadillac, a car. Like, the 80, like the 80s or early 90s big car where like you could crawl up in the up in the back window and like take a nap while grandma was driving that's well, my right. grandma used to drive that giant impala i used to sleep back in the back window <laughs> yeah with the dead bees yeah yeah uh, yep. <laughs> that's a very very specific image bro. <laughs> <laughs> and the and the faded uh the oh, faded yeah. hat, the faded baseball yeah. hat. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a, a pink Reds hat that used to be red. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I'm going a Buick Park Avenue. Again, like like we had a it was, I think it was like a 95 or something like that. Buick Park Avenue when I was in high school. And I, I was looking them up. The, uh, the 1990 or like an 81. Those were the two years that I found really good pictures of that I loved kind of, they, you know, kind of similar looking to the, it's like a big boxy car with like a big grill in the front. Um, an old, uh, an Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. <laughs> 85, like 85 no. mid eighties Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, kind of another similar body style a little bit to those other ones. 22s on it. He's got <laughs> hydraulics in the front and the back. No, no, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't Flip change it, it. I wouldn't soup it up or anything like no, that. No, this is I like would... luxury yeah. comfort. You hit a bump and you just go. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even feel it. You just... 
everything. Yes. Yeah. A okay. pillow, a pillow just comes yeah, up under absolutely, you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then last, uh, I'm going a Lincoln Continental, another kind of big luxury, you know, like late eighties. Even kind of, <laughs> I, I don't, I have no idea why or when I started liking those kinds of cars. They don't even fit in parking spots. No, no, no. They, or they, most garages. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. I would love to get an old cat, like a, a Cadillac from the 80s or 90s, if I ever get that kind of money. And to just, it would just be fun to have. I just like how they look. It, it might be an old person car, but I'm an old person. I love it. You are an old person. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Very I just sir. I just got about 15 or 20 years older by telling you guys what kind of cars I like. Those are hilarious. Those <laughs> and are you were already 30 years older than us with the music. Thing. <laughs> <So>. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, there we go. That's Andre, it. thank you as always, my man. Me Once time, again, fellas. let the people know what's the tweet, how they get a hold of you on the tweet <laughs> Get box. a hold of me on the tweet box. Uh, <laughs> it's Andre Edwards 06. Uh, are you, on the, are you, on the did, box. You, did you pay did you pay your eight dollars to get a blue check mark i i did not i did not <laughs> no. wait you can buy a blue check mark yeah yeah is that uh, a new old, yeah old musky uh old musky yeah. Elon Elon Musk gonna make some money yeah he's uh he's poor now that he bought twitter so <laughs> i guess he needs he needs everyone to contribute eight dollars a month <laughs> He's gonna build his fortune back up eight dollars at a time okay. for, for less than the price of two lattes. You two can have a blue check. <laughs> yeah, man, I love that. The whole point of the blue check is so you can know that who you're looking at is validated as that person. And now there's thirty seven thousand LeBron James. <laughs> oh man, it is it is the most hilarious thing ever. The things that you see on Twitter now, like. Hey, People are talking about uh, Twitter is going to go to hell and like it's going to fall apart and it's what. It, no, I love reading like just the most random people who are no longer have control of their account as the blue check mark of like Adam Schefter reports. I took a poop today. Like it is fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> So good. Well, you got to look at it because it's Adam Schefter. Absolutely. It's I, oh, I love it. It's great. <laughs> All right, Adam Schefter is regular. Now we know. Hey, hey, Good for him. things we need to know. Good for him. That's that's the news we are here for, people. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> oh Lord. All right. Well, Andre, thank you. You've been so generous with your time as always. Hopefully, uh somewhere around the end of the year, we'll be hearing you when the Bengals finish out eight and we'll be able yeah. to hear you uh mm. singing. Let's get it. Let's get it. I'm well, down. I'm I'm, all, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's get it. Wait, isn't it two tie all tie? Was that like two, didn't we do like a two tie all tie or something like that? And then whoever gets the most picks wrong. So like it's not who has the who's the farthest away. Oh um, I, th no, I think it was I think it was farthest away. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. We had a farthest away. Away. <laughs> can we put it two can we put it in place? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so like Adam and I already picked the same, technically the same finishing record. So it's, it will come down to a tiebreaker of whoever picked the most games correct. I mean, he's already got like seven of them. <laughs> I can't believe it. I mean, I'm really yeah, leaving either. myself after last year. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. But, um, yeah, no, I think it's always no. been whoever has the worst. I feel like I still have a chance. I feel like I still have a chance. You do, yeah. I mean. On paper, it's an outside chance, but it's a chance. So, so here's this: you got, you actually have one loss to play with, because yep. that would split the difference between yep. what you picked and what we picked, right? And then we would, it would go to whoever picked the most correct. So, I mean, you, you still got a loss to play with. <laughs> Is it going to be Don't the Chiefs or the comeback. Bills? Which one? Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> Don't call it a comeback. I yeah. never left. Chief, Chiefs or Bills? Which one? Which one are you calling right now? Browns. <laughs> right. That's probably the sensible call, sir. Yep. That's the sensible call. <laughs> All right, Andre, we definitely appreciate it, my man. We'll get you back on here. Uh, you know, obviously, at least by the end of the year, so we can do this whole thing. 
Yes, Hopefully sir. We'll Hopefully we got, some, we got some playoff. playoff. Hopefully we got some playoff previews to do. Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. All right, boys. Much, Thank you all right. Much love. Yep. Oh my gosh. Andre Edwards, so ladies fun. and gentlemen. So, so great. Fun. Yes, sir. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> it was it was so it was so exciting right before we started when I was going through with my yellow highlighter that barely works and like highlighting the same thing back and forth 15 times to try to get it to look like it's highlighted to see that I, I was ahead. I actually, I actually picked games correct this year. Good work on you. Good work. Oh on my your gosh. Well, I'm proud of you. Speaking of picking games, correct. Yeah. How did we do last week? Well, last week was week 10. And uh, we went into that week. You still had a four-game lead because we both went 3-0 and the previous week, week nine. This week, Chris, I went 3-0 and again. Whoa. I got that Not- Washington, Philadelphia. I picked Washington. I, even, I think I even said, well, of course, the, the Eagles are going to win that game, but it was an 11-point spread. Washington won that game <laughs> incredibly. Yep. Um, so I got lucky there, but three, and know, and, uh, you went one and two, I picked up a couple games on you, man. Oh, that was a rough one for me. Picked up a couple games. You're still ahead by a couple games. So I'm 13 and 14 now, and you're 15 and 12 on the year. Okay. Um, so you're still, you can, you can still be comfortable. You can still go to sleep tonight with a, with a head. Still got a winning record still ahead. That's right. That's right. So we enter week 11 where I uh, will be picking two. I have one selection. I will be picking my other two uh, on the spot. And, but you're a lot better than that. And I am at that than I am. Would you like to go first? Absolutely. Let's do this. You just gotta, here's the deal, Adam. When you don't know exactly who you're going to take, you just got to kind of talk it out. Mm-hmm. Right. You just got to talk it out. So we'll start off here. Uh, remember that we do this on Wednesday nights. Uh, we go off the spread from the ESPN app uh, just because that's what we do. Uh, let's start. Fun game. Cowboys at Minnesota. Dallas in Minnesota. It's going to be cold. Dallas is a one and a half point favorite. Give me shirtless diamond chain wearing (laughs) Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings minus one and a hook. Uh, There's some good games this week. Uh, The Bengals are in Pittsburgh. They are a three and a half point favorite. I'm going to take the Bengals in that. I think they Hmm. do a decent job on these fellers here to, to make up for what happened in the very first week of the year and last but almost certainly not least of all, uh, I am going to take. Uh, that's a good question, Chris. Who are you going to take in the last game? You know, you got a lot of games out here that are that are uh, difficult games. You got the Bills and the Browns. Bills minus eight. That's going to be that's going to be a terrible game to bet because it's going to be a blizzard in Buffalo. They're calling for three to six feet of snow. <laughs> Solid. Not inches, feet of snow. God. Insane. Oh, I mean, close. like around here, they, they'll say, oh, yeah, you get four to five inches of snow and you might get two or you might get like eight or ten. So they're like a few inches off. They're spreading it out three to five feet. That's 24 inches that they're giving themselves a play. It's pretty good. Jeez. Pretty good. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's take the last game. Let's go Eagles and Colts. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take the Colts. I'm going to take the Colts. I think the Colts learned something. Jeff Saturday continues his streak as interim coach and maybe even gets coach of the year as he turns the Colts around. I am going to take the Colts plus seven. All right. That's in Indianapolis. Taking the Colts, a a, uh, home dog as we like to say. All right. Good picks. Good picks. You got Minnesota, Cincinnati, and Indy. I'm going to start with Detroit at the New York football giants. 
Giants are a three-point favorite in that game at home, and I am going to go with the Giants in that game. Um, I think just for the fun of it, I'm going to flip it and go. I was actually thinking about taking Minnesota. I think I'm going to go ahead and take Dallas uh, <clears throat> on the as a favorite on the road. I don't like that, but especially against a good team. I'm going to go ahead and take Dallas just to make it interesting. And then, you know, I think I'm going to maybe go with one of these last games, this Sunday night game, the Chiefs Chargers is a little interesting, and the 49ers Cardinals on Monday night's interesting. Um, boy, I, you know, those are decent-sized spreads where the visitor, where the, where the road team is the favorite in these games. I am, I think I'm going to take – that eight points is a big number. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the Arizona Cardinals at home uh, as an eight-point underdog against the 49ers. I like it. All right. That wasn't so bad. No, no. Might be your best week yet, too. Yeah, I don't know about that. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Never know. All righty. So we got that out of the way. Um, what else do we have? Do we have anything else? Is there? Oh, you know what I wanted to ask you about? Oh. Right before uh, we started this podcast. Now you are out of town. And you are in Toledo, Ohio. And you take the opportunity. I think I feel like you do a good job of taking the opportunity to either when it's nice enough out, you go fishing you find spots to go fishing or you find a, a, a minor league baseball game. You find some event to occupy your time when you're done with the work day and you're out of town tonight, Chris, you went to the Toledo Rockets basketball game, right? Mm -hmm. How was that in Toledo? It was a good game. It's a very small, it's not a big place. Uh, I sat in the fourth row. Nice seat right on the corner, right on the end. Nobody messed with me. The seats are a little rocky. Not a big fan of the – it's like maids that go back and forth a little bit. Every time somebody sits down in your row, it's a little goofy. Uh, me and the other 120 guys there, I, I feel like we had a great time. Did you get a program? I did not. Gotcha. I wanted to. I was going to, but I couldn't find them anywhere. By the way, only two concessions opened, one on each side of the of the arena. That's it. Sure. Uh, no, they did have yellow rally towels that I did not take. Mm. I wanted to make sure, you know, some kid got there late. When I got there, I was like, well, if some kid gets here late, I want to make sure he's got one. Oh, no. Everybody could have taken four. <laughs> they, had a, they had a thousand for a hundred people. That's sure. For a hundred people. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. And it was like they had there giving away 1500 and there was boxes of them still there when I left at halftime. Boxes. <laughs> They're just handing a case of them to people on their way out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, funny. Uh, anybody stand out? Any really good players or anything like that? Uh, how was Toledo? I think you mentioned they, they played Oakland and they weren't so great, but how Oakland was, was uh, Oakland played terrible defense. Uh, Tons of open shots for, for Toledo, and they knocked them down. They had two kids, their point guard number 10, and then they had a big white guy inside that was pretty dominant in there. Took the ball to the basket very well. Back guys, he did it all. He took he hit a three. He took a guy off the bounce. He backed the guy down. He did. He, he was very, very athletic. I can't, couldn't say his name. Huey, something, DJ Huey or something like that. Huh. Dewey and Louie, I don't know. My favorite DJ. Yep, that's exactly right. And then uh, number 10, uh, he was their point guard, big hair. He was – that kid was good. He was good. Right on. Good. All right. So, I mean, you go to Toledo every few weeks. Do you think you'll go uh, to another game? Is that a one-time deal? Well, uh, I mean, it wasn't that. They, did, they, they didn't, didn't have anything that would draw me back to it. Maybe if they're playing somebody, maybe you know, but I don't know who they would play in the MAC that's – stands out in the Mac uh, because nobody's coming to Toledo to play basketball. Toledo's going to whatever team they're going to. Sure. That's not happening. So, uh, no, I, I don't know. Probably not. 
Probably, probably not. I mean, I can't say no forever. Maybe I'll go to a game someday. But, you know, end of the year, maybe if it's like one of the last games of the year and they've got a chance to win the league or something and maybe it'll be a little more exciting. They had a guy, the, the you know, the guy who comes out and talks, you know, to get the crowd hyped up. So he's standing right next to me in this little outcove, right? He's standing right over here and he's just practicing his lines. I keep seeing this dude, pra- he's practicing. Practicing, 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 going over what he's going to say. He's talking, talking with his hands and he's talking, you know, like mouthing it, not saying anything. He's right next, right in this little tunnel area. And uh, he walks out there, couldn't understand a word he said. He was calling out all the fraternities. It was fraternity night at the game. He was calling them out and you're supposed to hoot and holler if you, your fraternity or sorority got called. I think I heard like two people say anything. He named like 12 sororities and, and whatever those houses are. And every, he was like, okay, that was pretty good. You could tell he was, he had exactly what he was going to say already written out. And it was like, no, nobody even said anything. Nobody <laughs> even knows what you're talking about right now. Oh my gosh. That's good. Hey, you know who my favorite Toledo rocket of all time is? Who's that? Chad Kamstra. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Without a doubt. Did you did you get a picture with the Chad Campster statue outside? I did not. No, I, you know we we have to play his son in the uh, his son's a year older than ours, and but when we play in the tournament in the Catholic school tournaments, they make us play a year up, which is not because like we're super great. Don't get me wrong, we get our heads kicked in every time, just because we get to pull from a bigger group of kids, uh, we have to move up. So, <laughs> Campster's team put a, like a forty spot on us. And held us to like 15. Okay. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that they we they pretty much gave us that 15 points. Like that was at the end, garbage time. They weren't even playing defense. It was uh, pretty bad. Yeah. So if I did take it, I would I would take it and probably try to go get it signed. Without a doubt. <laughs> there you go. 40, 40 points, by the way. Chad Campster's career high uh, at Elder against St. X in 95. Um, <clears throat> Is that when he hit it from the Panther Paul? Hit the three from the ball. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he hit a bunch of them that game. Yeah, that was. I've <laughs> I've, I've watched it on YouTube a bunch of times. Anyway, <clears throat> um, I don't know if you're joking or not. No, you I'm be I, totally serious. I'm not, and that's why the girl from Hooters never called me. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so we've got. Uh, what do we have? One more thing to, to do here. I mean, we got to yep. talk about our our man Neil Brennan uh, and his special which was your, your, your selection. So I'll let you introduce it and talk about it. It was, it was blocks. He, he had blocks. Um, yeah, no, I, it was my selection. I want to know. Okay. We'll just, okay. 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 All right. Okay. okay. All right. First off, uh, <laughs> this is totally different. I don't know what a Ted talk is, but I feel like I was in the middle of Okay. The yeah. way the lighting was, and or like a Verizon uh, or like an iPhone release or something, it kind of felt like maybe like he looked like Steve Jobs up there. Maybe I'm not sure, um, but uh, he, he he looks like I remember when it first came on. I looked at him. I was like, this dude looks bad. Like he looks sickly. Yeah. Real skinny. Real, and he's having trouble, man. My man's having some issues. Apparently, he's had some issues his whole life. This is a lot about issues and some of it there was no punchline for yeah he just wanted to tell you what was going on poor lady out there said it's not you like in the middle of one of his jokes yeah he's trying uh, to comfort him yes like you could hear since sincerity like she really like somebody in the audience was thinking he might kill himself tonight like like you know what i mean they're like trying to talk him off a ledge he and now he he did a good job. Uh, I don't you know I I don't know how. I'm sure a lot of that is all stuff that he's worked out in many therapy things, and and that he did all of. And there was lots of talks before he ever came out with this because this isn't something you see somebody just do. Um, honestly, though, for all the like straight serious parts that did not get a joke, he's just naturally funny. I know he talks about he has to work it, work on it harder and, you know, and writing, you know, he's more of a writer than he is a comedian or something like that. But I still found myself laughing at a lot of his jokes. 
I feel like it, I still, it's not my kind of comedy. This is not my kind of comedy special, right? Like I am, my kind of comedy special is comedy from the get go. No, it doesn't stop. Keep going, you know, constant, you know, no seriousness, no politics, no nothing. I just, just joke after joke after joke. Yeah. But I, I really did. I really did like the special still. Like, I, I feel like everybody should watch this special, whether you're having a tough time in your life or if you want to watch a comedy special. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. It's weird to say that, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, a 3.4. Better than average, better than average. Uh, I've given much worse. It wasn't bad. That might be a little low. Maybe a three, six is better, but I'll stick my three, four. I got Didn't you. crack quite the four for Haas though. Yeah. I have one question for you before yeah. you start. Do you think at the very end when he went up there and moved the glasses a little bit so it looked like he had glasses on in the shadow? which was really cool the way he moved those blocks around and they put the spotlight on it and it was do you think that he put those glasses in the wrong place on purpose and then walked back there and slid them forward or do you think that he noticed it and went oh crap and then walked back there and slid them forward that's a great question i it, you can't tell he did if if he did it 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 looks like it could be on purpose like it's I think he did it on purpose. Do you think so? I think, it's, I think that it's on purpose. It's made to look like it was a mistake. Okay. But I that do I don't think I, that I don't think that guy he he sent somebody a script. He had a script, not just like you know this joke, this joke, you know my my joke for this, my joke for that. No, it's a he had a full out script. This dude yeah. had a full out script. He I think that's part of it. Otherwise, he just would have left it go. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> probably right. Um, yeah, you know, when you said when you say he had a script, that that makes me feel like, yeah, this is more of like a one man show than a comedy special. You and know? that's kind of how it felt too. It yeah. felt that way. Yeah. Uh, which is which is fine. Um, I I really was not expecting this at all. I had no idea what blocks meant. I you know I you see like the 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 thumbnail or whatever for the, for the special. And it's, it's just like the, his picture pixelated and it's pic, kind of pixelated. Yeah. It's, I had no idea actual wooden blocks would be involved. And uh, I had no idea it was going to be so serious <laughs> or, you know, man. Yeah. He, he really touches on politics and social stuff and, and mental health stuff you know, which a lot of people do now. Um, but I mean, it was, yeah, parts of it were like, he goes into a thing and he's serious. And I'm like, all right, here comes the big, the big punch, the big twist. No joke. Either, either it didn't hit quite as hard as I thought it would, or yeah, there wasn't much of a joke there. A lot of them there were not. He just said what he had to say and then he just stopped. Yeah especially the very end he's sitting down yeah. in that chair kind of leaning forward looks like he's like depressed <laughs> and, and, and I'm, I'm like waiting for the big finish like comedians are strategic about which joke they use last absolutely he didn't use a joke last <laughs> not a single one he is a funny guy it was interesting to me to to find out and, and realize that he didn't start his stand-up comedy career until he was in his 30s i believe and, uh, and he said he's 48, 48 years old, 48. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have, the, I've probably he, heard that at some point, but would not have guessed. Means he didn't start stand up till like the Chappelle show. Yeah. Yep. Probably after that. Um, yeah. And so he's, he's much closer to Dave in, in age than we thought. Cause Dave's about 50, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was all. It was a lot of interesting stuff here, man. Uh, I I did write a couple things down. Um, <laughs> he talked about the uh, white privilege and that kind of thing. I know it's a sensitive thing, but he talked. Uh, you know, he got pulled over and he was doing like seventy five and a fifteen or whatever <laughs> it was, and, and he's like, okay, he's like, you know, I'm 
I'm, I know I deserve whatever, you know, whatever I get here, give me the citation or whatever. And he said, the cop comes back from running his, his <laughs> license or whatever. And he's like, all right, I'm gonna let you off with a warning. And he's like, all right, officer, it's been a white privilege. Thanks. <laughs> and he's like, and you wouldn't believe that guy. <laughs> that guy says, <laughs> uh, oh, oh yeah, the privilege is all white. <laughs> the privilege is all white. <laughs> Oh, that was pretty funny. A little play on words there. That was funny. Um, <laughs> he's talking about, oh man, I think this is like something about dating or something like that. And and uh, he's at some point he says something about like, let me show you how to choke a wolf or something. Like yeah. that. I forget what the premise was of that, but uh, but I did write that down because I thought that was good. Um, and then he talked about only uh, there were only three people that that flourished in the pandemic bo burnham amazon.com and the 98 chicago bulls <laughs> 98 chicago bulls i did think that was, <laughs> was good like, too. man it i was love like, that it's like they won all over again <laughs> that's right uh bo burnham had that that what i thought was an awesome special that really strange it was you know really different one but by himself craziest in house. Special, without a doubt the craziest special yeah um and you know that's another thing is Bo Burnham with that one, and really a, a few of the last several that we've watched, people are getting more creative with with how they're doing specials. People aren't just a lot of people aren't just going up there and telling jokes for an hour and that's it. There's something even if it's just like something in the intro or that, but they're doing some they're adding pieces to the show. They're adding elements to the show that you that we're not used to seeing traditionally in stand up comedy. Right. And, a lot of it's totally fine. It's, it's, it's good. Um, it's, I'm, I have a hard time with change and everything, you know, I, I want to see the, I want to see it go up there and give me 75 one-liners over the course of an hour and they all got to kill, you know, like that's what I want, but people are doing, uh, getting creative. I like that. They're getting creative as long as it's not outrageous and just like off the wall. Um, you know, Eric Andre and, 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 uh, 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 Tim Heidecker did his, like his, his whole thing was like a sarcastic, the whole yeah. special was like sarcastic. And so, I mean, those are different and, and some of them are okay. And some of them aren't as okay, but, uh, it is kind of cool to see people doing different things. I gave it a 3.2. Did you really? I did. Wow. We we're right around the same one right there again. Right yeah there. i mean it was a i mean i i i i would tell people to watch it it's not I don't, i'm not going to tell anybody it's the funniest special i've ever seen yeah but uh it also like i said man it makes me feel like i hope somebody's like talking to this dude every night like calling him calling him at night and calling him in the morning you know and <laughs> yeah dude needs a little extra help <clears throat> he's got a lot of friends in comedy i know and and i'm sure he's okay i'm sure he he I'm sure he goes to therapy and he, he yeah, certainly, sure. he certainly uses uh, drugs as a, as a therapy. And uh, <laughs> did you see that? I mean, like this dude is like so serious and it's like, he's going to China to have electrodes drilled into his brain. Yeah. 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 I, I knew he was like really into experimental drugs, like as a form of therapy or whatever. Um, more and more people are getting into that stuff, but I'm way too scared to try anything like that. But <laughs> yeah, um, and I don't know. Maybe if I had a ton of expendable income, maybe I'd feel different. I don't know. But and you can buy think. a rubber room. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You, you know, you can put people around you that keep you safe or whatever, I guess. But I'm mm -hmm. still, so I would always still worry about the long term effects of my brain. It's bad enough as is. I don't want to make it any worse. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Well, we were pretty close on that. Not a bad special. We've got to pick. Uh, by the way, we're taking a break from Reese's this, this week. We'll be right back into it next week. It's going to give us another week to uh, wait on the email back from uh, John Reese himself. Uh, I emailed him to, to say, hey, you got any suggestions for us? We've done all these things. We're trying to hit every Reese's product there is out there. Uh, can you send me some stuff? Can you send us some stuff? Um, just waiting to hear back from him. Yep. Great granduncle John. Yeah. Yep. 
I should know his name. I went to Hershey, Pennsylvania, and Hershey is, I think Reese's is owned by Hershey or something like that. Um, yeah. So I went on the tour and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, all right. You've got a Mount Rushmore for next week. I've got a comedy special to pick for next week. Uh, would you like to go first or you want me to, to pick a special? What do you think? Uh, if you've got a special, go ahead. Pick a special. All right. I was thinking, you know, a bunch of bunch of options these days, uh, which is great. And there's some other ones. I know Big Jay Okerson just uh, f- just rec- just filmed one uh, a couple weeks I- ago. Uh, uh, what's uh, whiskey uh, whiskey ginger? Um, oh my gosh, I love the guy. Okay, I can't yeah, yeah. I'm um, terrible with names. I know he's talking. Anyway, about. <clears throat> he's on. <laughs> He's on Dave on FX. Um, all right, Andrew Santino. He just filmed one. Anyway, got some got some ones coming up that I think are going to be awesome, um, and some some plenty that have come out recently. I'm going to go with one that you and I, a, a guy you and I both know very well because we've we've watched at least one at least one of his specials before. And I think we both loved it. Um, but Dion Cole just came out with a new special. I saw that. You know, I it's called. It. Yeah, it's called Charlene's Boy. Uh, so, and that's on Netflix. So we'll I'm check out Dion's new hour-long special. I'm super stoked for that one. That Dion, that, those are hilarious. I knew you were a Dion Cole guy. Love Dion Cole. Love him. Love him. He's so good. Love it. All right, that sounds good. So I got to. Uh, so, um, <sighs> okay. It is time for the Mount Rushmore of dairy products. <laughs> oh, oh man. Okay. Dairy products. How specific are we getting about these things? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, like the car one, huh? <laughs> yep. Yep. Just give me a Mount Rushmore of dairy products that are considered dairy. <laughs> i'll tell you something i love we've done dairy. cheese before we've done cheese before oh yeah we have so we right. specific cheeses so i feel like if you want to say cheese you can just say cheese okay unless like you want to go with like a cottage cheese yeah i mean i might I, you know i could go a sharp cheddar or something like that you know yeah. um yeah. okay good i i love dairy products love them yeah. me too i'm excited about this all right. I like it. That sounds good. All right. Well, Adam, I think this is a nice, quick uh, way to go on the old podcast today. And we had Andre Edwards on. That was big. Next week, we'll uh, be getting into week 10, of, no, week 11, 11, 10, 11 of the 11. football season. We'll continue our picks, see what's going on in the NBA. And till then, brother, don't forget to turn your headlights on. <laughs>